Hello. I'm Alexis Rodriguez. Today, let's discuss the topic entitled Agro Nanotechnology A Future Technology for Sustainable Agriculture. Here's the outline of my presentation. First, I will introduce what is nanotechnology and its beginnings. Then, I will talk about what is agro nanotechnology. Followed by the potential applications of agro nanotechnology. Lastly, I will discuss the challenges and future outlook of this technology. To begin, let me start with a short introduction. The ideas and concepts behind nanoscience and nanotechnology started with a talk entitled, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, by physicist Richard Feynman, at an American Physical Society meeting at the California Institute of Technology on December 29, 1959. This date is long before the term nanotechnology was used. In his talk, Feynman described a process, in which scientists would be able to manipulate, and control individual atoms and molecules. Over a decade later, in his explorations of ultra-precision machining, Professor Norio Taniguchi coined the term, nanotechnology. However, it wasn't until 1981, with the development of the scanning tunneling microscope, that the era of modern nanotechnology began. Nowadays, nanotechnology is defined as the design, characterization, production, and application of structures, devices, and systems by controlling size and shape at the nanometer scale. In nanotechnology, nanomaterial research is an area of intense scientific interest, due to a wide variety of potential applications, in biomedical, biosensing, catalysis, optical, electronic, and agricultural fields. Interestingly, nanomaterials are considered a bridge, between bulk materials, and atomic or molecular structures. A bulk material, should have constant physical properties, regardless of its size. But at the nanometer scale, unusual properties of matter may arise. This is a direct consequence of the size of nanomaterials, physically explained as quantum confinement effects. The result is that a material, for example, a metal, when in a nano sized form, can demonstrate properties which are very different from those when the same material is in its bulk form. For instance, gold nanoparticles, around 2.5 nanometers in size, melt at much lower temperatures, around 300 degrees Celsius, than gold slabs, which melts at 1064 degrees Celsius. Copper nanoparticles smaller than 50 nanometers, are considered super hard materials, that do not exhibit the same malleability, and ductility as bulk copper. Bulk silver, is non-toxic and unreactive. Whereas silver nanomaterials, have been shown to have antiviral activity. In addition, nanomaterials have also an increased surface to volume ratio, compared to bulk materials. This has important consequences, for processes that occur at the surface of a material, such as catalysis, and detection. Moving towards our main topic, I will now discuss about what is agro nanotechnology, or the application of nanotechnology in agriculture. Sustainable agriculture is crucial to achieve zero hunger, which is among the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. World food production and distribution are facing huge stress due to increasing population, climate change, environmental contamination, and higher demands of water and energy. Present agriculture uses a staggering amount of resources. For instance, the global annual crop production exceeds 3 billion tons. This enormous amount of crop production requires 187 million tons of fertilizer, 4 million tons of pesticides, 2.7 trillion cubic meters of water, which is about 70% of all freshwater consumptive use globally. And over 2 quadrillion British thermal units of energy. According to Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, 
the world's population is projected to reach 10 billion by 2050, boosting food requirements by 50%, especially in the developing countries. Moreover, there are approximately 815 million people who are currently undernourished, and it is expected that an additional 2 billion people will be in this category by 2050. This situation calls for profound changes in the global food production systems. Recent research has shown the promising potential of nanotechnology to improve the agriculture sector by increasing the efficiency of agricultural inputs and offering solutions to agricultural and environment problems for improving food productivity and security. This is the fundamental concept of agro nanotechnology. Now, we will go over to the potential applications of nanotechnology. Recent studies involving the application of nanotechnology for sustainable agriculture will be the highlight of this section. Recently, a wide range of potential applications of nanotechnology has been envisaged in agriculture, leading to intense research at both academic and industrial levels. Indeed, the unique properties of materials at nanoscale make them suitable candidates for the design and development of novel tools in support of a sustainable agriculture. Some of the main applications of these nanotools in agriculture are for the purpose of increasing productivity, improving soil quality, stimulating plant growth, and smart monitoring. First, let's discuss the application of agro nanotechnology to increase productivity. Nanomaterials can find application in the development of nanofertilizers for the immobilization of nutrients and their release in soil. Such systems have the advantage to minimize leaching while improving the uptake of nutrients by plants and to mitigate eutrophication by reducing the transfer of nitrogen to groundwater. In another context, nanomaterials could also be exploited to improve structure and function of pesticides by increasing solubility, enhancing resistance against hydrolysis and photodecomposition, and or by providing a more specific and controlled release toward target organisms. The development of nanopesticides is expected to play an important role in future plant disease management as eco-friendly alternatives of conventional synthetic fungicides. A recent study entitled, Synthesis of Calcium Borate Nanoparticles, and its use as a potential foliar fertilizer in lettuce, Lactuca sativa, and Zucchini, Cucurbita pipo, have featured the potential use of nanofertilizers in horticultural plants. Boron is an essential micronutrient for the growth and development of vascular plants and is associated with cell wall structure and a wide range of metabolic pathways of plants. In this study, a combination of co-precipitation and heat treatment methods were used to prepare calcium tetraborate nanocrystals using calcium chloride and borax as calcium and boron sources, respectively. DLS data suggested that the synthesized nanoparticles have an average size of 81 nanometers, a polydispersity index of 0.21, and a zeta potential of minus 24.10 millivolts. Furthermore, SEM analysis revealed that the synthesized calcium borate nanoparticles were spherical in shape. Foliar application of the boron containing nanofertilizer increased shoot and root dry mass production of lettuce by 2.7 and 1.9 fold when applied to boron limited plants. This nanofertilizer benefit was also noted in comparison to a commercially available foliar spray, Bortrac where the nanofertilizer application increased plant growth by around 58%. The differential mobility and sensitivity towards boron in lettuce and zucchini indicates that species-specific application protocols need to be adopted to optimize fertilizer used and avoid toxicity in these and other crop species. Nanofungicides are expected to play an important role in future plant disease management as eco-friendly alternatives of conventional synthetic fungicides. This is demonstrated in yet another fresh study, entitled, Use of Copper, Silver and Zinc Nanoparticles Against Foliar and Soil-Borne Plant Pathogens. 
In this study, the sensitivity of seven fungal species, known to cause foliar and soil-borne diseases, were assessed in vitro. After being subjected to nanoparticles, containing copper, silver, and zinc. The nanoparticles used in this study, were all purchased from Sigma Aldrich. These include silver nanoparticles, with an average size of 100 nanometers, zinc oxide nanoparticles, with a particle size of 50 nanometers, copper nanoparticles, with a particle size of 25 nanometers, and copper oxide nanoparticles, with a particle size of 50 nanometers. A commercial fungicide product, containing the active ingredient, copper hydroxide, was used as a control or reference. Mycelial growth assays, revealed that copper nanoparticles, with mean inhibition rates, EC50, ranging between 162 and 310 microgram per milliliter, were most effective among the nanoparticles tested, in inhibiting fungal growth. It is followed by zinc oxide nanoparticles, with EC50 ranging between 235 and 848 microgram per milliliter. All fungal species were practically insensitive to copper oxide and silver nanoparticles, except for B. scenario. Copper nanoparticles were also more fungitoxic, in terms of mycelial growth, to almost all species tested, than a protective fungicide containing copper hydroxide, which was used as a reference. In conclusion, the tested nanoparticles are excellent candidates for alternative, lower dose, protective fungicides against both foliar and soil or seed borne plant pathogenic fungi. Next, let's discuss the application of agro nanotechnology for improving soil quality. Hydrogels, nanoclays, and nanozeolites have been reported to enhance the water holding capacity of soil, hence, acting as a slow release source of water, reducing the hydric shortage periods during crop season. Applications of such systems are favorable for both agricultural purposes and reforestation of degraded areas. Organic nanomaterials such as polymer and carbon nanotubes, and inorganic nanomaterials such as nanometals and metal oxides, have also been used to absorb environmental contaminants, increasing soil remediation capacity, and reducing times and costs of the treatments. Nano Zero Valent Iron is one of the most widely used nanotechnologies in soil remediation. However, its long-term performance can be limited due to its high reactivity and rapid aging. Thus, a relevant study entitled Immobilization of Cadmium, Copper, Lead, and Nickel in Soil, Using Nano Zero Valent Iron Particles, Aging Effect on Heavy Metal Retention, is hereby presented. The objectives of the study were to compare the immobilization of cadmium, copper, nickel, and lead in artificially contaminated soil samples, using nano-zero valent iron, and to evaluate their retention, over a one-year period. A commercial polyacrylic acid stabilized nano-zero valent iron, in aqueous dispersion, was used in the study. According to the information provided by the supplier, the aqueous dispersion of nano-zero valent iron consisted of 17% zero valent iron, 3% magnetite, 77% water, and 3% surfactant. The average surface area of the nano zero valent iron was found to be 20 to 25 meters square per gram, and the average particle size was 50 nanometers. Single metal contaminated soil samples were amended using 0 to 1.05% of nano zero valent iron. Leaching using calcium chloride solution, and a sequential extraction procedure, was performed to evaluate the immobilization efficiency, and fractionation of heavy metals, before and after aging. The results of research, show that the application of nano zero valent iron, can initially effectively reduce the content of all heavy metals, in the available fraction of soils. In this study, the highest immobilization effectiveness, of calcium chloride extractable heavy metal fractions was obtained for the most soluble heavy metals, namely, cadmium and nickel. Among the studied heavy metals, the strongest binding to reactive poorly crystalline iron oxides was observed for copper, whereas the lowest was observed for cadmium. 
Due to their high reactivity, nano zero valent iron can rapidly age in the environment. Nevertheless, the study results show that, in soils, a long term nano zero valent iron remediation strategy can be effective for the immobilization of heavy metals that have a similar ionic radius to that of iron 3. Thirdly, agronanotechnology can also be used to stimulate plant growth. Carbon nanotubes and nanoparticles of gold, silica, zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide can contribute to ameliorate development of plants by enhancing elemental uptake and use of nutrients. However, the real impact of nanomaterials on plants depends on their composition, concentration, size, surface charge, and physical or chemical properties besides the susceptibility of the plant species. The development of new protocols and the use of different analytical techniques, such as microscopy, magnetic resonance imaging, and fluorescence spectroscopy, could considerably contribute to understand the interactions between plants and nanomaterials. An example of the application of nanotechnology for plant growth stimulation is described next. A recent study, entitled, Zinc Oxide Nanoparticle Mediated Changes, in Photosynthetic Efficiency, and Antioxidant System of Tomato Plants, was carried out to assess the role of zinc oxide nanoparticles, in tomato plants growth, photosynthetic efficiency, and antioxidant system. The seeds of tomato, were procured from National Seed Corporation Limited, New Delhi, India. Healthy looking seeds with uniform size were surface sterilized with 1% sodium hypochlorite solution for 10 minutes, followed by repeated washing with double distilled water. At 20-day stage of growth, roots of tomato plants were dipped into 0, 2, 4, 8, and 16 mg per liter of zinc oxide nanoparticles for 15, 30, and 45 minutes. Then, the seedlings were transplanted in their respective cups and allowed to grow under natural environmental conditions. At 45-day stage of growth, the zinc oxide nanoparticles treatments have significantly increased growth, photosynthetic efficiency, together with activities of carbonic anhydrase and antioxidant systems, in a concentration and duration-dependent manner. Moreover, the treatment by 8 mg per liter of zinc oxide nanoparticles for 30 minutes proved to be the most effective, and resulted in maximum activities of antioxidant enzymes, proline accumulation, and the photosynthetic rate. It was concluded, that the presence of zinc oxide nanoparticles, have improved the antioxidant systems, and speeded up proline accumulation, that could provide stability to plants, and improve photosynthetic efficiency. Lastly, we delve into the application of agro-nanotechnology for smart monitoring. As described by Musavi and Rezi in 2011, nanosensors help farmers in maintaining farm with precise control and report timely needs of plants. Thus, it will be mandatory to address research efforts to the development of nanosensors to aid decision-making in crop monitoring, accurate analysis of nutrients and pesticides in soil, or for maximizing the efficiency of water use for a smart agriculture. In this context, nanosensors could demonstrate their potential in managing all the phases of the food supply chain, from crop cultivation and harvesting, to food processing, transportation, packaging, and distribution. Furthermore, the emergence of nanotechnology has opened new horizons for constructing efficient recognition interfaces. For example, it was demonstrated in a recent study entitled Investigating the potential of multi-walled carbon nanotubes based zinc nanocomposite as a recognition interface towards plant pathogen detection. In this study, a multi-walled carbon nanotube based zinc nanocomposite was investigated for the detection of chili leaf curl virus. Atomic force microscope analysis revealed the presence of multi-walled carbon nanotubes having a diameter of 50 to 100 nanometers with zinc nanoparticles of 25 to 500 nanometers. In this system, these bunches of zinc nanoparticles 
anchored along the whole lengths of multi-walled carbon nanotubes, were used for the immobilization of probe DNA strands. The electrochemical performance of DNA biosensor was assessed in the absence and presence of the complementary DNA during cyclic and differential pulse voltammetry scans. Target binding events occurring on the interface surface, patterned with single-stranded DNA, was quantitatively translated into electrochemical signals due to hybridization process. In the presence of complementary target DNA, as the result of duplex formation, there was a decrease in the peak current from 1.89 times 10 to the minus 4 to 5.84 times 10 to the minus 5 ampere. The specificity of this electrochemical DNA biosensor was found to be three times as compared to non complementary DNA. This material structuring technique can be extended to design interfaces for the recognition or detection of the other plant viruses and biomolecules. Now, we look into the future of agronanotechnology on how it can succeed and contribute to sustainable agriculture. Considering the great challenges we will be facing, in particular due to a growing global population and climate change, the application of nanotechnologies, as well as the introduction of nanomaterials in agriculture, potentially can greatly contribute to address the issue of sustainability. Nanotechnology has found many applications in agricultural applications, such as nanofertilizers, nanopesticides, nanobiosensors, or as environmental remediation agents. However, a firm understanding of nanomaterials' fate and environmental impacts remains a major challenge in agricultural and environmental sciences. Collaborative research among institutes exploring different uses of nanomaterials would be crucial to develop efficient, multifunctional, stable, cost effective, and environment friendly nanomaterials. This would also facilitate to complete the picture about the role, fate, behavior, and ecotoxicity assessment of nanomaterials. Application of nanomaterials may help improve the growth and yield of crop plants, but response may vary as per plant species. Thus, commercial use of nanomaterials requires thorough investigations into screening and optimization of the nanomaterials for different plant species. Efficiency and behavior of nanomaterials can be tailored by tuning the properties and stability of nanomaterials. Therefore, further progress in the development of innovative and improved synthesis methods with precise control over product composition will be highly useful to improve their efficiency. Moreover, most of the studies on nano assisted agriculture rely on experiments performed under controlled conditions, while limited data is available regarding their field application. More knowledge at field level would be highly useful for large scale implementation of nano based strategies. As with the application of all new technologies, there is the need to perform a reliable risk benefit assessment as well as a full cost accounting evaluation. Furthermore, it is very important to engage all stakeholders, including non-governmental and consumer associations, in an open dialogue, to acquire consumer acceptance and public support for this technology. Well, that's all for today. I hope you have learned some good insights about agronanotechnology from this presentation. Thank you for watching, and see you again next time. This is Alexis, signing off.